Sridhar and Mona, really looking forward to exploring this first prediction with you both. AI disruption is top of mind for not only business leaders, but also everyday citizens. So let's get the uncomfortable questions out of the way first. What's the impact of AI on jobs, Sridhar? Hey, excited to be chatting today, Ryan. Uh, I think it's a little early to tell. It's clear that many information function, things like you know, creating ads, writing blogs, stuff that you know, lots of people do for a living, sending email like you and I do every day. Uh, it will be impacted by AI, um, and all of us will get uh, a little bit more uh, efficient. The hope, of course, is that this lets us do higher value things. Um, but it can also be the case that this leads to like fewer people needing to do the same job um, and, and so on. But like with any other big incremental increase in productivity, I think our overall productivity as, as groups, as a country, um, is going to go up. Um, but I think the individual impacts are hard to figure out just yet. Thank you, Sridhar. Great to have a baseline equally top of mind is the impact this technology will have in the creation of misinformation. Mona, yep. as you look towards the future, should we be concerned with the misinformation being produced by Gen AI? Um, yeah, that is a very good question. And I think the short answer is, um, yes, we should, um, we, we should think about that carefully. So um, just to give context, Gen AI uh, makes it really easy to generate images, generate video. Um, it is very fluent in human language. Um, it can uh, produce uh, content that is sounds very confident, that looks very fluent, but it might not be correct. And you can, it, it lowers the bar um, for a bad actor to generate misinformation, incorrect content. So it is important for us as a society to understand that, to know the limitations, um, and to be diligent about how we use this information. And I think technology is going to help with that in the short term, for sure. Uh, but long term, kind of a combination of um, regulatory actions plus really education is going to really help with that. So we should be careful about it. We should understand and be diligent. But this is very powerful, so we should use this power as well. So we, it shouldn't be, uh, we, we shouldn't have so much fear that we are not able to leverage this fantastic technology. Great to hear your perspective on that, Mona. I know the audience will be excited about that. Sridhar, the topic of misinformation also brings up AI hallucinations. Do you anticipate hallucinations being a sh potentially show-stopping problem? And what solutions will solve for them? Well, I think it depends on how people use AI. I think at a fundamental level, all of us have to understand that direct output from an AI model does not represent any kind of reality. Um, this is just a model generating sentences. It's quite fun if you wanted to generate a piece of poetry or a new piece of copy um, or a new image for an ad campaign you want to run. Um, but on the other hand, if you ask it a factual question and it confidently makes up some stuff, um, you just have to understand that that's how the model has been trained to behave. Um, this is where techniques like search retrieval used to augment the output that comes from language models. So you actually have a frame of reference. You know where the text is coming from. It's techniques like that that are going to be really important. People are also working on techniques to just figure out um, as the model is generating, how confident it is. Um, but I think we need to use a variety of techniques. But fundamentally, we need to understand that raw language model output um, you know, is uh, what was famously described as a stochastic parrot. It's just, it's outputting some things, um, but you should not really believe it. Thank you, Sridhar. Now let's dive into the technical. While corporate leaders have voiced real concerns about cost and technical challenges slowing the rollout of generative AI and LLMs, is the technology really going to change everything? Or will it just be another enabling part of our infrastructure like cloud or automation? Mona, would love your perspective. Yeah, so um, 
let me add some context here. So is this, is this really just hype or is, is there value? Uh, if we look at uh, maybe chat GPT as a consumer app, in the first two months that it was released, uh, about 100 million active monthly users were using this app. So the next maybe most popular social media app like Instagram reached that level of usage in about two years. So now one could say, well, you know, everybody was super excited to see if this is actually um, helpful. What does this do? Is this interesting? Uh, does this usage sustain? Very recently, uh, OpenAI disclosed that now they have 100 million weekly active users, which means that people are finding value. People are doing something with this technology that is useful to them, that's valuable to them. So now on the enterprise side, as you mentioned, it, it, things have been a little slower because of some of the um, limitations, some of the cost, uh, and um, some of the like technical uh, challenges as well. Uh, but there is a lot of value in there. And many companies that we talk to, they are all trying to basically figure out how to leverage this and how to use this technology and how it can bring value to them. I do believe that this is going to be a much faster change than you know, migration to cloud and cloud computing and automation. Still early days. You're still figuring out the technical challenges. There are, there are definitely blockers. But um, I think this is going to be a much faster transformation. I'm looking forward to seeing it play out. But I want to take a step back. Am I thinking about this correctly? It sounds like the near term might be a little bit rocky, but it will transi transition quickly. Am I thinking about this correctly, Sridhar? Um, yes, I think we have short term challenges. But just like you know, the move to cloud and the cloud revolution is on its way, but lots of people have on-prem stuff. I think you will see it um, roll uh, like rapidly at first, but gradually as it penetrates more and more pieces of software and, uh, and, and more and more sectors. Um, I do feel confident that the short-term hurdles, including the worries about ROI, will be addressed pretty quickly. I think AI's great power is going to be basically democratizing access to technology. Um, remember, with fluent speech, you don't even have to be literate in order to interact with a piece of uh, of software. I think that's the that's like the fundamental promise of AI. It's happening in language that we as humans are fundamentally all capable of. Um, I think yes, there'll be you know bumps and accelerations in the rollout, but I think that basic aspect of the technology is honestly what's exciting um, about AI. Thank you for helping me along this journey, Sridhar. Gen AI allows us to do more with less, but you still need the human element. Will this ever change, Mona? Or will this be consistent going forward? So over the many years, as technology advanced, we, we did less of some of the things that we used to do, and some of the things that we like don't do at all anymore. Uh, there is no phone operators anymore. In the past, we needed someone to connect the lines, and now it's all automatic, so that doesn't exist anymore. Um, and there are things we do less because technology is helping. We don't read maps in the car, <laughs> you know, on a paper anymore because I can't imagine using a map in a car these days, Mona. <laughs> to your point, I know there are things that we don't do. We we don't we don't have a camera like a, with a physical role in it that we develop and print later. We don't we don't, of course. You know, artists might do that, or some people, you know, might find that as a good hobby. But generally, people do less um, when a better technology comes in and uh, allows them to do uh, things easier, faster, better. And um, and your question is like, is there going to be always a, a, a human element? I think we are going to find where this technology is going to be helpful. Is going to help us do better, do more and do other things. It will enable us to do more. It will increase our capability as a society. We will find things that we can do now that we couldn't do before because we were, you know, we were not as capable. 
the the map analogy like you can now easily go anywhere much more you know much more confidently and um, and it's just um, a very different world um, with uh, digital maps something that you really couldn't do in the past so it increases our capability um, in profound ways and I do think this is actually a, a much more powerful technology than for example the maps so I think it's going to unfold. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to see uh, what we will be able to do better. And I'm sure that we will find more things to do. I'm not worried about human species <laughs> not finding things to do. Um, I think this is going to be fantastic. An exciting next chapter indeed. I want to stay on this concept of, of the human element a little bit longer. An exciting element of Gen AI is that it really opens up the world for the non-technical individuals. How does this technology really level that playing field, Sridhar? Well, close to home at Snowflake, for example, uh, of course, you know, we uh, create amazing data systems. For many companies, we are the data backplay. We are the source of truth. But if a business user wants an answer to a question, if it's not already part of a report, you know what? They have to get in touch with an analyst who then has to look at the schema and figure out how to answer that question take that output, put it into a visualization tool for that business user to consume. This can take a week if things go well. Um, now imagine that instead of that, for a particular area, Snowflake helps our customer create a chatbot. And we are very clear, anything having to do with the financial information for this particular group, you can ask questions here. All of a sudden, business users can say what they want um, and this application then help decide what the SQL query underlying should be uh, and issue that query and give that output back to that business user. Um, to me, this is, this is magical because you have just cut many, many steps along the way. Is this going to be able to solve every single problem and question? No. Uh, to give a simple example, uh, language models by themselves don't really have predictive power. And so if said business user is like, hey, how much revenue will we make five years from now? Sorry, language models and writing SQL isn't really going to help with that. You need other techniques, you need machine learning, you need prediction. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that you need to, um, that you need to have. So it's important that we have clarity about what this produces when it comes to existing data, um, when it comes to fluid access to that. I do think it's a game changer. But back to your point about needing different technologies and Mona's point about, you know, humans will have work to do. Um, this is not the end all be all. Um, it is an accelerant on what we already have. Magical indeed, Sridhar. There are no bounds to the potential scale of this technology. However, as we discussed earlier in this segment, collectively, I think we can all agree that we need to be careful. What ethical guardrails need to be established? And is it already too late? Sridhar, we'd love your perspective on this to start with. Uh, it's not. I think, uh, first of all, all of us need to understand that this technology, like other technologies, is a tool. The internet let us do some things a lot faster. Um, you know, so did mobile phones because all of a sudden, most of humanity was carrying around a smartphone in their pocket. Um, applications like Uber, which were inconceivable before, came to be. But we also know how this story played out. There was a lot more misinformation. Um, there was a lot more harmful content. I think it'll be the same this time around. So the fundamentals that we have around things like, you know, not okay to yell fire inside a crowded stadium or a movie theater, stuff like that, blatant misuse of the technology. Um, needs to be looked at the same way as we have looked at all technology. Uh, to Mona's point, I do think that this will enable uh, the creation of lots of fake content. We are headed to a world in which you can't really trust a voice you hear anymore uh, or believe a video that you see. That's like a very different reality from the one that we are, um, that we are in. Uh, these are the things that, need, uh, that we need to be careful about. Also, we need to remember that models reflect what is on the internet. And we know that the internet is far from a perfect place. So for example, if this model um, is used to process, let's say, uh, an application to a college or you know, like a loan application, 
we need to understand that the biases that exist today on the internet, and we know that the world is far, far from being a fair place right now, I think these models will reflect that. I think we need to go into this with eyes wide open. There are many things that it will enable, but there are also consequences like increased misinformation. Um, I do think that it is hard to imagine just like some simple regulation that's going to take care of everything. So we do need to be thoughtful about how we go about even passing laws and, uh, and, and regulation. But I think eyes wide open, um, let's make sure that we utilize existing laws and regulation fully, um, but be open to where future regulation or law might be needed and apply it judiciously because those have their own second order consequences as well. I'd say that's the way to approach this problem. Thank you, Sridhar, for your perspective. Eyes wide open indeed. Mona, we'll love your thoughts as well. Yeah, that was a great answer. I don't have a lot to add. I would just say, um, again, as Sridhar mentioned, bias, misinformation, you know, copyright issues, plagiarism, um, issues like that do exist. Um, I think as a society, we are much more aware of um, problems like this these days than let's say, you know, 10 years ago or 20 years ago. We are, we understand the misinformation and the impact of it uh, on the entire society these days. Unfortunately, uh, things like this happen and it's kind of top of mind for a lot of people. Um, and I agree with Sridhar that we, we need to go in eyes wide open. We need to, uh, as a society, develop frameworks on how to um, think through that and what, what are some of the regulations that we need um, and, and really have an open dialogue work together, understand it, and um, and really kind of put the kind of guardrails that allow us to take the most advantage that we can um, and you know, curb the, the issues and the limitations as much as possible. I couldn't agree more. Eyes wide open. At the end of the day, we are all in this together. Thank you so much, Sridhar and Mona, for those insightful perspectives. We're off to a strong start here in the Predictions virtual event. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan.